Greetings everyone. Back on the bench is the Tigersaurus project. I need to get this thing finished so I can work on some other projects like the speaker project which has taken a new direction so that'll be interesting. But anyway I have all the transistors mounted. I have little heat sinks on them. So they're not flapping in the breeze because the uh, pin out of the transistor doesn't match the hole. I had to use little wires to flip them around. Plus the leads won't fit in those little holes. I'd have to drill them out. I don't want to do all that. So I mounted it this way. I made little L-shaped heat sinks for them. And uh, I'm using this, this 3M heat transfer tape. I really like this stuff. Holds nicely. And these aren't flapping around in the breeze. And they get a little heat sink action there. Now I had to switch the drivers here. The main drivers. Let's see here. Get my pencil. Well, I said in the other video that these are adequate. The BC139 140s. Well, no, that's not actually true because I reconfigured the output stage not to have any gain. Remove these shunt resistors and these feedback resistors were shorted out. With a little jumper I show in there. So, under a high signal condition, let's say the output's pulled towards the negative side, you know, the peak of the signals on the negative side. Well, that means this will be close to the negative rail, while this is close to the positive rail. So there'll be a pretty large voltage across these. And I confirmed it with a scope. So I switched these to the MJE15028 uh, and 29 here. Those are 120 volts. I'd like to have the 150 volts, but, you know, the versions of these, but out of stock. And I got these for the JAT801 project, so I had them. But even with that, I wanted the 150 volt transistors. But Mauser or DigiKey, one of those sites say out of stock until September 2024. So <laughs> I'm not going to wait a year and a half. This part shorted stuff is annoying you know, when I'm trying to select parts from my projects and have to go with something else or you know, redesign the project because I can't get a part. And I'm not relying on eBay. I don't use fake parts. Okay, so anyway, I got all this together. The amp works, but the bias is kind of wonked out now. And I figured it would be because you know, I took these resistors out, different transistors. So the bias is not adjusting anymore. See, the thing is, the way they had it here, I had uh, two diodes. This one diode is actually two diodes in the little package. So if we just say 0.6 volts per diode, that's 1.2 volts. And you need another junction, you need another uh, 0.6 volts on the base emitter junction before this transistor is going to do anything. And the way the amp set up now, you have these two junctions on the upper and lower driver transistor so that's about 1.2 and this thing needs about 1.8 so it's not going to work it's not going to regulate so what happens the bias it tries to spread this bias voltage up too much in other words turning these on too hard which causes the bias to go real high in the output stage so yeah I have to redesign this so uh this transistor's on the board and this one's on the this diode's on the heat sink. So what I'm doing is this is now going to be on the driver. 
It's a complimentary feedback pair. You should monitor the drivers in that case. So you can monitor one of the drivers anyway. So I made this transistor up for that. And the wires will just go in the socket on the board. Well, in the holes on the board. So instead of a diode, it'll just be the transistor. And um, figure about 0.6 volts per side. So I'll put a 1K here. We'll have the 1K control here. I need to raise that to about 1.5K to give an adjustable range here. So I think that'll do it. I don't know how well the uh, tracking will be, but these uh, power transistors tend to have a lower base emitter voltage. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes here. Okay, the little transistulator is in. I don't have it mounted to anything yet. Just want to see how it works. Got the resistors in. If I didn't mention before, all of these front end transistors were replaced along with the voltage amps and driver. Okay, we're set at plus minus 15 volts, one amp current limit. Let's see what happens. Okay, Let's see what happens here. Let me drawing uh, kind of heavy current. Oh, yeah, the control actually works. Oh, yeah, that's what I want to see. Okay, we turn it clockwise and it drops counterclockwise and it starts going up. Turn it all the way at, we're at current limit. Let's turn this down then. Now go to the limit of my supply. I have a uh, custom function saved under one here you can you have like five memories which is plus minus 32 volts in a series config all right let me adjust this bias control which way was it now oh there it goes so we want to turn that so we get a little bias flowing. And we'll leave it there. About 1.4. And we started at 0.14. Now we're at 0.27. So you can see how that needs to be tracking to bring that temperature or that current down. But anyhow, we'll do that in a minute. Let's play some music through it, the YouTube safe stuff. to a bunch of tests but first I need to mount this to see how the tracking is it's no good if it doesn't thermally track okay I mounted the transistor on the driver heat sink and it's been running I left it go for an hour and rock steady rock steady bias that's what I wanted to see I played some music and let it set. And yep, staying good. So I marked the changes up here. So yeah, this schematic's getting marked up pretty much. A lot of changes and things. I'm leaving the stability components as they are. I'm not changing anything there. If it works, great. Leave it alone. But if you were more adventurous than I, you could change those. Do Miller compensation or something like that. Okay, rechecking the stability here. Oh, great. Right in a freaking glare. 
It does have the input filter in, so it slows down the 10 kilohertz square wave, but I don't feel like unsoldering parts. But at least it's stable. They have the capacitor, 0.1 microfarad. I'm considering that now my standard test, and I sweep the waveform from low voltage to high voltage. 4 ohm, 8 ohm. So yeah, this is so far so good. Will it work at full rail voltage? That's what we need to find out. Turn this on 4 ohms. Let it warm up a bit. Just another thermal test here. Running the square wave at about half the voltage level. That should get the outputs hot. We're getting nice and toasty now. So if I turn off the fill tech here, we'll see how the... Uh... Okay, it went up. So we'll just let it set and see if it drops back into line. It should fall back into line as it cools off. Okay, that's what you want to see. So we took the signal away and let the amp cool just a bit. The bias fell down right to where it should be and set a climb up. You don't want to see it climb up, that's bad news. So yeah, that's good. Okay, we're back on shore power now. I do have a 300 watt bulb limiter. And uh, I gotta adjust the bias here. I de-biased it a bit. See, there is the notch. I zoomed in on the notch. You tune that notch out. See, if you put too much bias in it, the bulb gets brighter. See, we wanna not have that. So, let's adjust to that notch goes away. Looking good. So, I'm going to monitor bias stability. See how this thing works. Make sure nothing's getting too hot. Okay, it's completely off the bottle now. Directly plugged into shore power. It's got the cap load on there square wave I can't run that long it'll just roast my load square waves man that goes off the scale there whoa that pegs the meter okay just letting it bake here. It's been on for about a half an hour. Seeing what happens. Just checking the temperature. Did a thermal camera check. Make sure nothing's overheating. I did all the calculations. You know, nothing should get really hot. Do a finger test. Being aware that there is high voltage on these rails. Across the rails, it's like 150 volts. Let me turn the signal down. Yeah, sitting idle there with no signal. Just under 75 volts. Those are 75 volt caps, I believe. <laughs> That's pushing it right to the edge. If we crank it into clipping, there's no weird weirdness going on there. Let me read the screen here real quick. Now we're hitting about 41.8 volts RMS. 41.8 squared divided by 8 ohms. Getting uh, 218 watts. So that's pretty good. I expect to give up a little bit since we're not running the output stage with gain anymore because you can't force it all the way to the rails. Idle power draw. I have my kilowatt set for watts, not volt amps. And it's hovering around 72. 
So uh, bias stability is rock steady on this thing. It draws 400 watts from the wall at clipping. And it has such a turn on surge that the lights flicker in my computer backup power supply for my computer over there turns on. It clicks on for a second because it draws the voltage down so much. Now I know this part of the house, I'm furthest from the electrical panel, so I know I get a voltage drop back here. Another part of the house, I, I could probably get another 20 watts more out of this thing. That's just the way it is with the electrical power. But yeah, this thing is working just fine. I don't see any issues. Just let it bake for uh, a while. Uh, play music through it all day. But I suspect it's fixed and done. I didn't even take the stability tester cap off. It's stable. Bias is good, as I say. This thing is rock steady. If the owner wants to replace these bulbs here, they're 28 volt bulbs, you can get the number off the side of them. They're in series, so if one goes out, they both go out. Because it's connected from the center tap to one of the outer taps on the secondary of the transformer. So the, yeah, the other amp bulbs are out as well. So this amp has been macked. It's been modified and hacked. Macked. But it works. That's the important thing. No more oscillation. Good stability. Does its business. So I'm going to consider this one a wrap. That'll do it for this. Thanks for watching.